speaking of changing tides in the NCAA, there's been a, a change at UCLA Athletics since the end of last football season. Dan Guerrero, he was the athletic director for almost two decades. UCLA won a lot of championships in Olympic sports, but not a lot of success on the football field. And then in May, they hired Martin Jarman from Boston College, previously at Ohio State and Michigan State. And now he's at UCLA, and we'll see. He's a young guy. Let's we'll see how he builds in the future. I don't know, Jack. What do you think that Martin Jarman is going to do to change the culture and the outlook for UCLA football? I mean, Martin Jarman is a great AD. He has done great. He did great things at Boston College. He did great things when he was an assistant at Ohio State. I think other than some reservations on how he will work with some of the other Olympic sports, I think he'll do a great job here. Football is going to be his big project. Basketball is looking like it's on the up uptrend right now. Football has been struggling the past couple of years. He's going to make a coaching change. And it's unfortunate for Chip Kelly, other than the fact that Chip Kelly has only won seven games in the past two years. But uh, you have to prove it, especially with the new athletics director. Dan Guerrero was here for years, and he gave coaches a couple extra years because – he, he believed in job security, but when you bring a new athletics director in that didn't pick your football coach, they always want to make that big splash and bring in their guy. And I think that's kind of where we're inevitably headed. Even if Chip Kelly has a great year this year, I think he'll if he has a great year this year, he'll stay another year. But after that, it looks really dicey for him. Yeah, I mean, Jarman is the guy to, to build this program – I want basically from the ground up, the UCLA football has not done much in the past two years, but he can't come out here and fire Chip Kelly just because he's not his guy. And he can't really do it at the end of this year either. There's a lot of financials that are factoring into that. So as much as he would like to come in and make the football program his own, he's going to have to wait. It's a, it's a 10 year process. Maybe it's, it's fewer years, fingers crossed for everyone involved, but it could very well be a rest of his career project in building this program back up. No, I mean, no. the, the good thing is at, at Boston College, he was there for, for three years. And then two years, they had Steve Adazio. And he just wasn't cutting it. He had been waiting around for years. Everyone had been begging for him to be fired. But then he'd go seven and five and make a bowl. And that maybe the same thing could happen here with Chip Kelly if he just buys himself a little time. But once the bottom fell out at BC, he made the change and he went out and hired Jeff Halfway from Ohio State, who he had connections with. That's what I'm looking forward to with Martin Jarman. I don't think he's going to be able to be hands on enough to change things while Chip Kelly is here. But once the time comes that Kelly is gone, I know Jarman has the connections, the charisma, and the whole package where he can go out and get you a top tier coach. He did it when he was an assistant AD at Ohio State. He was part of the team that helped bring in Urban Meyer, which then won a championship. So maybe UCLA ceiling isn't that high, but when you have Jarman with Big Ten connections, with ACC connections, at some of the biggest programs in the country, who knows? He, he can really take you to a lot of places, but you have to wait. It, it's it's a really a, a game of patience. It's a waiting game. Um, so but it's just a matter of time for Kelly to go, and then Jarman will be in his sweet spot. How much more patience can UCLA fans really have? Have it's been a while since we've had a really good program. Even when Josh Rosen was here, our program wasn't amazing. You know, we were playing in those second tier, third tier bowls at best. We we're going six and six in Josh Rosen's last year. Now we haven't had a winning season under Chip Kelly, and we're just supposed to wait it out. Even if Chip Kelly doesn't win any games, wins one game, wins two games, wins three games, goes under five hundred again. If he goes in a 10 game season, if he goes three and seven, he's now got 10 wins over three years. And you don't think Jarman can just fire this dude and bring in someone. I, I mean, you, you look at Steven Dazio, who Jarman went to Boston college. He didn't have his guy, but he let Adazio go for three years. It went seven and five, lost the bowl game, seven and five. Their bowl game was canceled because of rain this year. They went six and six and they kept him around. I mean, I, I just, I'm, that's what you think, though. It's not, it's, not out of the question. it's not out of the question if Jarman gives Kelly a bit of a leash. It will run out at some point. I understand. Kelly is not here for the long run based on these first two years. 
But Jarman really, I, I don't expect him to, to make a rash decision and rush to fire Chip Kelly for multiple reasons, starting with the financials, but also going at uh, Jarman's track record. He seems very friendly with Chip Kelly on multiple Zoom interviews and press conferences, which, of course, I know he's yeah. going to play that out. He doesn't want to make it seem like anything's wrong, but he seems like an, like an earnest, honest guy, and I, I think he's going to give, give Chip Kelly the benefit of the doubt for two more years. No, I, I completely agree. Every time that Jarman's talked, it's been all the right things. He's said all the right things, done all the right things. That's great and all. But you've come in to turn this program around. That's why you've been hired. The past couple of years under Dan Guerrero, not been good. You have to do something. UCLA fans do not have patience like they should have. 